Hey Vue and Nux friends, welcome back to another video and today we will check out how to turn anchor tags into Nux links or other links for the Vue folks. Especially if they come from third party APIs or CMS where you only have the raw HTML. Ever had that issue? Let's check out how to solve it. Okay, before we go straight into the code, a little info, it will be a bit more code heavy as before but don't worry, you can follow along. I explain all the steps. So let's dive in straight away. We have a plain Nux project, nothing on there. We use version 3.7.4, which is the latest version at the time of recording. We have an empty Nux config and just an almost empty index page, except that little diff here. And an about page just saying that it is an about page and a link back to the index through a Nux link. And now to our scenario. Let's imagine we have some kind of API or column management system and we want to receive some HTML from that CMS and uh, eventually showcase and display that on our site. So let's just skip the whole calling the API part and just assume that's the content from our API call, like some text nodes and then a link, right? So far, so good. Now, the first thing you could do is we could start saying, all right, let's um, just render it here. Okay. We use the mustache brackets uh, to render that, to do some interpolation from view. And if we check the browser, we see, oh, that's not exactly what we want because view already helps us out in terms of security. It already sanitizes all the content coming in through the mustache syntax and some mustache brackets. So all things that are interpolated are sanitized and there's no risk of uh, access as of cross site scripting attacks. What we want here though, let's say we have content here uh, and let's say we have diff and in the diff that um, content should be, we don't use the mustache brackets. Instead, we use the vhtml directive. Uh, and that's where the dangerous part comes in because everything in there is not sanitized and it can potentially lead to access as attacks. So always make sure that you sanitize your HTML on your own before using it. Um, unfortunately, that's not what uh, will be covered in this video because that's a whole topic for another video. Um, otherwise, your site could be a security risk and we don't want that. So always when you use VHTML, be, be sure that the HTML is actually just what you want to render, especially if it's user generated. Now let's have another look at the browser. We see, okay, great. Uh, we have the content there. We have the link there. Perfect. But if we click the link and um, have the network tab open, one sec, there, we click on it and see, ooh, that loads a lot, a lot, a lot. And if you filter the HTML out, we see, like only the HTML, we see, okay, this does a full page reload, which is not what we want. On the other hand, it's just an anchor tag, right? So it does what it should do. But we don't want that. We want a clear SPA navigation as before. So the first intuition coming back to the code would be, hmm, maybe we can transform the HTML, eventually get some result like next link here instead of an anchor tag. But I can stop you right there. This will not work because VHTML is only rendering HTML and no view components. So we don't have to start transforming the HTML. Instead, we have to do a little different thing we write our own directive and let's call it a V interpolate. So let's create a new const here, say V interpolate. And this is our directive. And like this, we can already use it. Everything that's V prefixed in the script setup part in the 3 can be used as directive. It doesn't mean it works, just means that it's recognized and can be used. And we could even pass something into that directive, but we don't need that. We just want to say, okay, hey, please, if we use a directive, for all links that are internal links, um, please make sure that they also do an SPA navigation and no, no full reload. But now we have to do that. We have to code it. Okay, so let's get going. It's very important to know that um, lifecycle hooks are also a thing in directives, but for the HTML element, they're bound to. So now we will take a look at the lifecycle of this diff. Um, we have mounted, of course. And later we will also use updated and before unknown, but we'll come to that in a bit. So what do we want to do here? Well, we want to get all links in the diff. Uh, we want to filter them. 
because we want to make sure that they have an href set and that they're internal. And then next we want to say prevent navigation and do SPA navigation. And then very important but often forgot, also in real life, the cleanup. Yay. Okay, and the mounted function gets an element, which is an HTML element, can be anything, because it can be mounted to any element. Um, we will create a type here straight away. If you don't use TypeScript, you can skip that, of course, uh, and call it interpolation element, which will just take the HTML element type and extend it for something for later. And we'll use it here. And um, now this EL or element, well, let's keep it short here. We can do a few things. First, what we want to do is we want to get the links. So let's say const links is the element dot. Now we can just use plain old JavaScript, get elements by tag name A, as this directive will only be executed on the client side because server side navigation is a whole different thing anyway. We can ignore the server part here, otherwise it might be a bit trickier, but in this case, that's good. Let's make an array out of it. So we use array from. And now we want to filter the whole thing because we get the link element and we also want to make sure that uh, there's actually um, this href attribute set. So we say link element dot get attribute href. Great. And now we say if this does not exist or if it's empty, we return false. So it will be filtered out. And now we want to do another check and say, is this uh, an internal link? So is this href actually not pointing to, I don't know, www.lichter.io, but to a slash about, for example. Uh, we will write this function just um, under it here as a helper function. Function is internal link. We get the href, which is a string. We can even say, yeah, it doesn't matter. It can also be non-existent. And now we say uh, return href starts with a slash. Okay, so we filtered them and we get them. Now we have to do something with it, right? We got the links, which is amazing. But now we have to do the navigation to prevent them and do the actual navigation. So for this, we say, let's add the listeners because we need to add one listener to each of these links to do something when we click on them. So also here, let's write that function. Function add listeners. And we say links, these are all, and we know that already. And, um, these are all HTML anchor elements because we filtered them out and it's an array. And now we say links dot for each. So we want to take each link element and say, okay, look, you know what? For each element, we want to add an event listener. On click, right? A very important. And we say uh, navigate. This is the function that we will execute when they will click on uh, the link, but that's not the case yet. And yeah, um, then we also pass a false here. And so far, so good. We're good to go. Now we just need to write that navigate function. <laughs> that would be good. So function navigate, we in here, because it's a function called in an event listener, we get an event, which is just a plain event. And Hey, what we do here? Well, we get the target, so the actual element. So let's say const target is event target. We know it is an HTML element. We even know that's an HTML anchor element, but it doesn't matter here. Now we say let's get the href target dot get attribute as before href. And what we want to do now is we could also have done it before. Say event dot prevent default. So this is very important do not navigate via full reload. So this is what that does here. And eventually you want to call navigate to href. So we use nux internal navigate to function to navigate. Awesome. We are pretty good. Almost done here. We add listeners. So we prevent the navigation and do the SP navigation over here. Now it's just cleanup time because there are a few scenarios that are easily overlooked. And for this, we will take the element that the v interpolate directive is bound to, and we add another method called component updated, or just on update or something like that. Let's go with component 
updated. So whenever there is an update, we want to do something. Exactly, we want to remove the event listeners. Um, not remove this nurse, but remove this nurse for all the links. Because if the component updated, we say like, okay, let's tear everything down and build everything up after waiting for the UI. So use views next tick here and then say add listeners again. And this remove listeners function is not built yet. So let's just build it very quickly because it works very similar to the add listeners one. So let's copy that, remove listeners, and we write just remove event listeners here and we're good to go. And now we write el destroy. Also, these are all just private methods we will use in a bit. Uh, I prefixed them with a dollar to indicate that just in case people come along that say, hey, what's that? And yeah, that's a custom method attached to the element. And in here, we can even remove this and just say remove listeners links. So in case the whole thing will be torn down by view, then we say goodbye to listeners because we don't need them anymore. Lovely. Now we have a little bit of red here because these uh, attributes do not exist yet, which is correct. So let's um, let's just add them to the type we created before because that's why we created it. So in here, we just say, okay, these are just functions and they might be optional because we set them in the mounted part. So they might not be available straight away. So, okay, we, we use them here. We define them, but we have to trigger them. And in the mounted hook of that directive, we're done. But now we need the before uh, oh wait, let's start with the updated hook here. Also, we get the element again, which is an interpolate, uh, interpolation element, what we defined. And just say, you know what? Element dot component updated, and we execute a function. We could also probably just write that as an arrow function that doesn't really matter much because we fire it and forget about it, that's fine. We use the optional uh, chaining operator here because it could be undefined in very rare conditions. And we do the same before uh, unmount, not before mount, and do actually the same. But here we really need to ensure that everything will be destroyed. And that's our directive. Now we can say, look, this v interpolate directive is now in our index page. That's not a very nice place for it. Let's just take everything we wrote and wait. Let's take everything we wrote, including the type, otherwise it would be a bit uh, unfortunate. And let's just create a new file coil called directives v interpolate.ts and put it in here. And now let's do an export const here. And we're good to go. So what will happen now is we import it. So let's do import v interpolate from directives v interpolate.js. If you don't want to import the interpolate directive here, you could also auto import the whole directives folder, but that's the topic of another video I actually shot very recently. So if you're interested in how to enhance your auto imports, take a look over here. And now we will just use it automatically because the vinterpolate is imported. It's available in here. We don't have to do much. And all the logic is inside the directives file. It can be reused. It's decoupled from that index view. And that's the whole thing. That's the whole 55 or 53 uh, lines of magic to ensure that our anchor tags actually behave like next links in case they are internal links. Before we jump into the browser and check how it works now, there is one more thing we can improve type-wise. So let's take a look at the file again. Um, and in here we define a type, but our directive is not really typed yet. So what we can do is we can import a uh, type called object directive from uh, view directly. And then we can say in here, this is an object directive for our custom interpolation element, uh, which we've typed here. And now we can remove quite some of these annotations because thanks to the helpful uh, helper type here, that's already given. Plus we get a full support in case like, oh yeah, we want to add a binding here. We want to access the V nodes, all the other options that directives might have. But that's just as an add-on, so the type safety can improve a little bit and you don't, um, I don't know, write some weird function that doesn't exist. Okay, but as we mentioned now, it's complete. So let's take a look in the browser and see if it works as expected or not. And here we are again on our beloved index page. 
And let's see what happens when we click that about page link once again. And here we see, nice, great. Nothing, no full page reload, just that JavaScript file is loaded. And that's also the only downside that this about.view uh, JS file is actually only loaded when we click on the link. So there's no prefetching happening, which is common for Nuxt links. You can add it functionality too, but that's a little bit out of scope. So uh, if you're interested in that, also leave a comment. Maybe uh, I'll add a little bit. And um, I think we're done here. That works as we expected and our links work. So let's just summarize what we did. So first we try to use the typical mustache syntax in Vue to render our third party HTML, realizing that Vue actually saves us from ourselves and preventing cross-site scripting attacks by not rendering the HTML, but just the content. That's very nice, but in this case, we really want to render the HTML and in a real life application, it would be sanitized already. So in this case, we use the vHTML directive and content is there, but the links, well, they do what HTML links do, what anchor tags do, a full page reload. So to prevent that, we created our own vInterpolate directive to use it in conjunction with the vHTML directive. And we ensure that every link in a certain HTML element and below, so all the children and grandchildren and so on, they will get an own event listener that will prevent the default navigation and then uses Nuxt Navigate to or the view router for the view folks to navigate in an SPA style. Eventually we extracted the whole thing we built, the whole directive into an own file so it can be reused across a whole application or even projects. I think that's it. If you have any more questions, please drop them down below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and happy hacking. See you in the next video.